So Music Guy is asking, with the news of Xenobots now being capable of reproducing, do you personally support the research and experiments? Why are you speaking like a mad scientist? <laughs> because it's it's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, as as they are right now, they don't seem um, at all scary. Let me tap into my inner boomer, because I am because okay, so I am I am very scared though, okay, and I think I'm justified to be scared, and I think like this is like, I don't it's it looks really bad, because your a fear of technology, right? A fear of progress. But I think like would mean like seems like you know seems like the, you're basically doing the same thing that people were afraid of internet and afraid of computers and afraid of like electricity and they were warned like oh if you do this like, the world will end and nothing you know things work for better for the better right so so people like I am very scared of this right and I will tell you why but people who have been scared of technology going to places where we can't control and destroying humanity don't have a good track record in history like they they ended up looking ridiculous in hindsight right so so i'm gonna tell you why i'm afraid but i know that this is this might look ridiculous at some point okay that we were afraid but i think like it's some level of fear is justified like just for us to be careful about things right so so i'm i'm afraid of the uh, i'm afraid th of this technology for the same reason people could be afraid of artificial intelligence right because if something is again i'm the, the xenobots right now i'm not talking about them right now okay right now they're, they're not capable of doing anything that i'm going to be afraid of okay we're talking cute. about it they look kind of cute yeah oh my god okay wait actually can you explain to people what this is before we, like it's no kind of, i kind can't of... <laughs> okay so let me actually show you guys what we're looking at here okay let me like show you some pictures they're kind of like artificial living things that now so apparently cool. yeah they could like reproduce now look at them look at this you're telling We're, me look at that little green the little green thing on the second from we the right have on the top row we're close to actually making life that isn't that wild let me see if we're cracking the code guys <laughs> so actually let me read the definition xenobots named after the african clawed frog are synthetic life forms that are designed by computers to perform some desired function and built by combining together different biological tissues like these things could be made to like carry some medicine or certain amino acids to places where they're needed it's going to be crazy like we're going to have like it's kind of like tiny little robots that are doctors in our body that just like Here you go. <gasps> i heard you i heard you're missing this I have, I have, I've come with the good news. I have the relevant chemicals that you were missing, but yeah, go on. You know, so, I mean, there's, um, ideas like this in basically every science fiction universe, but we were watching foundation together recently, which was so good, but it reminds me of the nanobots that empire has to keep yeah, him healthy yeah, yeah. and it tracks him. Like this yeah, is yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah actually it could do also detective work as well i guess anyways like i think like we're gonna like <laughs> okay i know this is ridiculous but i'm imagining a future where you get a cut and these xenobots just come like and they just fix yeah it exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah imagine with this like we will be indestructible like at some point i don't know it, it sounds Asian like america is saying they can also be programmed to break down microplastic that is awesome. We need to clean microplastics up out of our water so badly. The consequences. Imagine if they just turn it into bad. like good stuff. Yeah. Okay. But imagine if they could be made to destroy cancer cells, like detect cancer cells. Dude. And just right when they, right when cancer is forming, the xenobots are like, just goes, Zzz, Zzz. Or eat it, eat it up. I'm right. going to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you acting like these are so cute? Because <laughs> they are, because they're so small. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So, but here's the scary part. Okay. If something can reproduce, okay. Right now, these are completely under human control. Okay. But if they can reproduce, they can evolve. Okay. And if they can evolve, then they could evolve. Like, imagine if you release this into nature, right? Imagine, like, I mean, these are so tiny. It's not going to stay in the environments, in the controlled environments. Like, like what music guy was saying, like, they could be made to, like, eat plastic. Is that what he said? Asian American was saying that they Asian can American. break down microplastics. Okay, okay. But let, let's say they evolve and they start e eating everything organic. You know what I mean? Let, let's say, like, they evolve, like, uh -oh. oh, okay. Like we were eating plastic, but now like, oh, this, what is this other thing? With some, there's it's a mutation. Like everything, everything. They start eating uh, plastic and plants and humans and basically all living things. Like I, again, I know I'm being hyperbolic here, but they reproduce. If they reproduce, it means that they could evolve. If they could evolve, then they could evolve outside of our control outside of human control like you can't like you can go catch them when you release them in goddamn nature like how are you gonna like you know what i mean how are you gonna control that so that's why i'm like the the problem with ai that a lot of people like the the, the fear that we have with ai is that you know what makes ai ai makes ai okay so and we don't know how ai makes ai we just let it evolve it, it ai goes through an evolution itself like they they test themselves and they keep like re removing the ones that fail. And then the, the code keeps writing itself based on who's pass who's what code is able to pass the test the most successfully. So you have some AI teaching some AI something and another AI that is carrying out the test on AI. And then the AI graduates and the AI that is doing the teaching and also the AI that is doing the, uh, the test um is also evolving and it's just evolving on its own and at some point like it, and we have no idea how this code was being written we just because we're, we're incapable of detecting why this code works we just know that it survived it's a survival of the fittest of the best code right so that's what's very scary at some point we humans will have no control over what code is being written and how ai is evolving that's the fear at least that's okay i know this sounds hyperbolic but that's the, that's the scary part Right. As as soon as you have reproduction, you're gonna have evolu You might you're opening the floodgates to a form of evolution that we're not controlling anymore. Right. And that's what makes AI very scary. And that's what scares me about xenobots. Okay. This might be completely unfounded fear, but again, that's that's what I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling scared. I, I'm. But I'm they're scared. like tiny little monsters <laughs> that eat you alive. <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.